Hello everyone, this is Professor Immler. I just got done reading your reading summaries. I want to talk about a couple of questions that came up in all of the classes. So I teach a couple of these classes and these are the ones that came up um, throughout. So uh, the first question was, uh, what theory or approach would you be using if uh, you perform an action that both benefits yourself and maximizes overall happiness? Uh, and so I think this is a question of, you know, if there's ever a situation where you're both helped and other people are helped, you know, you're maximizing the good, uh, which theory would you be using? And um, it really depends on the why. So uh, for the ethical egoist, the why is I am benefiting. And the whole um, rubric is centered around the self and what's good for the self. If other people are benefited, that's great, or benefit from your actions, that's great, but we don't really factor that in. Again, we're only looking for our own long-term self-benefit. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, if that's what you're trying to maximize, then that would be the answer. Um, if, however, you are trying to max, if you're trying through your choice to maximize the good for as many people as possible, you know, you're a person too. You're included in that calculus. You're one among many, and uh, the good of yourself is equal to the good of any other person. So it really depends on uh, how you're going about making that choice. Um, but there are situations where the ethical egoist and the utilitarian might make the same choice. Um, okay, so the next one, um, let's see, uh, is I want to just make a comment about the trolley case. This came up in a couple of different people's uh, discussions. So uh, in the trolley case, we want to realize that there is no uh, option to do nothing. Both choices are active choices. You get, no matter what, you get to pick which situation happens. You can actively choose to not pull the lever and you can actively choose to pull the lever, but notice you are actively choosing. So there is no, I withdraw from the situation. You have knowledge of it. You get to pick which situation happens. So ultimately, it is your choice, and there is no, I'm washing my hands of this. And so there, one thing about utilitarianism is it, it forces you into the world in a way that we might be uncomfortable with. Um, okay, so then we have... Um, Injustice and utilitarianism, and this kind of goes along the same lines. Um, one of the interesting things about utilitarianism, especially in history, is it does demand us to look at the world and to notice, hey, there are people suffering, and if we can do something about it, we might have an obligation to do something about it, even if it costs us money, time, effort. Um, if it hurts our careers, etc. You know, we're at, we're looking for what is the right thing to do. And utilitarianism says, no matter who you are, you have an obligation to try to create a world with the most overall happiness. And so if people are suffering, there's work to be done. Even if we might not want to do the work, even if we want to put our heads in the sand, utilitarianism says, hey, no, I'm sorry. You want to know what's good. This is what's good. And so it is among, no, I would say it's the most demanding ethical theory that we will look at in this class. It demands the most of us. We have to go out in the world and create a situation where uh, the least amount of people are suffering. And that's a tall task. And um, for some reason, sometimes people say it's unworkable. Um, if I can't show partiality, if I can't uh, cultivate my own happiness in a way that's different from cultivating everyone's happiness. In a way, I'm a slave to everyone else. And, and this is exactly, you know, Ayn Rand's point is, hey, um, altruism leads to the death of the self because everyone else is, because there's more of them, is their happiness is more important than your happiness. Um, so there's that. Uh, then uh, someone talked about, uh, they were thinking about the morality of, I think, a father killing someone who had sexually assaulted his daughter, uh, and is that right or not? So a couple of things here. One, one is just kind of procedural points. 
do we know for sure that the person attacked the daughter? Um, if that is known, that's one thing. If it's not known, well, that that's another one, right? Are we, there's lots of cases in history where we have uh, hurt the wrong person. Um, we thought it was someone, but come to find out it wasn't. So that's a matter of fact, right? Um, but again, if, if we do know, um, there's this question of, well, I am paying back the person who harmed me and mine, um, and we're upping upping the game somewhat, right? So I, I think in this case it was we killed the person who had sexually assaulted our daughter. Um, this brings up a a question. So there's one there's that there's that satisfaction and revenge, um, but notice that that fundamentally leaves the trauma unresolved for the person that's been harmed. Um, and it's inflicting more trauma on the world. Um, it doesn't allow for the person who did the harming to make any kind of amends. Um, but also, one thing we want to note here is it perpetuates what we call uh, a cycle of violence, where... Um, hey, Beth. Um, where someone hurts someone, and then the person who's hurt then hurts that person back, but at a higher level. Um, and then in response, there's a, another round of violence that comes back that ups the ante a little bit, and, and we keep upping the ante. And um, all this really does is, is it never does it never solves the problem, but it continues this cycle of escalating violence in the community. Um, and so that's one thing as we're thinking through this question that we might want to keep in the back of our minds is how do we break this cycle of violence? Um, so anyway, these are some things to think about. Uh, overall, your reading summaries were pretty good, and I liked where your uh, discussions of the prompts are going. So keep it up. I'll pop in from time to time, and I'll talk to you later.